It only takes one instance of design to nail down design in biology, but of course, I think that biology is chock full of design. The second edition of the design inference delves into biology in a way that the first edition didn't. I really, in the first edition, just looked at origin of life and didn't really even come to a conclusion saying it shows that life was designed. I just said, here is how the logic works out and depending on how the premises are, how you fill them in with, you know, if they're true or false, then you can reach different conclusions. But I left it very open-ended. So I, I was intentionally cagey there because I didn't want to put my cards on the table. Now in the second edition, the longest chapter by far is a chapter on evolutionary biology. And so we look at uh, genetics, uh, we look at uh, this, uh, this argument, what it, what it would look like uh, for design inference to take hold at the level of genetics. And what you have is, I mean, you have a, a genetic code. So you go from codons of DNA to amino acids, and then you're coding for these proteins. And what, what you want to argue is that this sort of, uh, getting a functional protein and evolving a functional protein is going to be very difficult. Very difficult in one sense, highly improbable in that you're going to have a, a, a specification pattern match. So there's a design inference that's going to be in the background there. Uh, do we get that? Um, if you have to be careful in these arguments, because if you simply do enumerations, for instance, I mean, all the best estimates are that uh, protein space, the space of potential proteins is very sparse, okay? There are very, very few sequences of amino acids, so pe with peptide bonds, are actually gonna fold into functional proteins. So if you just take a, a you know, a, um, a random sequence of amino acids, uh, you're not gonna have, it's gonna be highly unlikely to have a functional protein. But the evolutionist will say, and the evolutionist is right in this regard, that that's really not the relevant probability. What you need to do is ask, going from an existing protein, can you evolve into another protein? And that's the sort of problem that molecular biologist Doug, Doug Axe has done. So what you have to do essentially is say, what are the probabilities of evolving from one protein to another if natural selection is working for you? And that's work that Doug has done for certain specific uh, molecular or biological systems. And you know the sorts of numbers that he is calculating are on the level of order of 10 to the minus 60, 10 to the minus 70. So that's one over 10 or one over one with 60 or 70 zeros behind it. So just to put it in perspective, uh, I think there's something like one in, there's something like 10 to the 16 grains of sand on the earth or so, you know? Uh, so it's, you know, so let's say it's more than that. Let's say it's let's say it's a trillion trillion. Uh, the sort of numbers that Doug Axe is looking at are one in a trillion 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 trillion. So highly improbable. But the the challenge is to say that sort of improbability holds even when you factor in a Darwinian mechanism. And I think he makes makes a good case. Uh, there's one pro protein enzyme that he was looking at, beta lactamase, and uh, I, I think the. The, the people on the other side have, have not been able to counter those numbers. And I think it's important to understand, design inference doesn't, as applied to biology, doesn't require that every aspect of biology be designed. It's enough that there be one aspect that it be designed. I and mean, if I'm looking at a, a, a decaying automobile in a junkyard, you know, uh, turns out that rust will reduce a car by about, I think, 100 pounds uh, what is it? Uh, it's about 10 pounds a year, I think. I read, read this book on rust. You know, so let's say you've got a car that's been 50 years in a junkyard. Uh, the effects of weathering, there are lots of natural forces, you know, the rust spot, the sagging, all of that is going to be, uh, be there. Lots of effects of natural forces, lots of chance operation, but there's still gonna be some clear evidence of design there, okay? And in biology, it could be that uh, there, there are random elements in DNA, 
okay? But are there some clear elements of design? And even just one clear element, one clear instance of design would be enough to nail down intelligent design. So I think that it's important to get the, the logic right. What the naturalist wants to say is there's no instance of design in biology, okay? The negation of this is there is at least one instance of design in biology. For, for all X, it's not the case that X is designed. That's equivalent to it's not the case that there exists an instance of design. So the negation of it is there is, an, there is one instance of design. So it's just uh, first order predicate logic. It only takes one instance of design to nail down design in biology. But of course, I think that biology is chock full of design. Uh, I think that's, uh, if anything, as the years have progressed, the complexities of life have shown themselves to be greater and greater, and the evidences for design, it seems to me, have only become stronger. Mm -hmm.